Hey, hey, look who showed up on February 14th. Hope you don't get any trouble. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to you. If you've got love, appreciate it. If you haven't found love yet, don't lose the faith. There's more people in the world now than there's ever been. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is February 14th. Footnote, I've got my live streaming event tomorrow, right? I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm there for an hour, maybe an hour and a half with my co-host Taylor, and we're there for you. You got a stock you want us to look at, one I haven't covered? Maybe I have. If it's hot, bring it on. I'll go over the information. Taylor will go over the chart, and we'll give you our opinions, whatever it's worth to you. But, fair warning, I'm not getting to all the stocks being brought to me. So, if you really want it seen, you can cheat. You can get it in the queue early, before 4 o'clock. I put up a placeholder for this video about lunchtime. You can drop the ticker in then. That is guaranteed to be shown. It's first come, first served. And that gives me more time to find information to share with you. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Thursdays. So what I do on this show is just share my due diligence on a hot penny stock that I found while I was trading through the day. I trade penny stocks, stocks under five bucks that I can find on any market, and I'm constantly looking for stocks that have potential. Now, normally when I find a stock that has potential, I'm looking at the charts. I find the charts that has heat, then I go look for a catalyst. I find hot information to match my hot chart. Got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got one, no, two to share with you right now. And there's a reason I'm sharing both of them with you because they're both in the same sector. I found this stock. This is D-Wave Quantum, ticker QBTS, finished the day at $1.88 with almost 31% gains. And she is on the major exchange. Well, as you've probably already guessed, she is involved with quantum computing. D-Wave is one of the four founding companies in quantum computing. One of the first out there, maybe the first on the market. And they've got products at NASA, some universities, and you can use them. They're open to the public if you understand a little bit about quantum physics. Now, when I was doing research on this company, I was finding a lot of things I liked about it. The chart's really hot. She had news that came out. Well, I discovered this company. This is QMCO Quantum Core. She finished the day at 70 and a half cents. She was up almost 45% today, and she's a major exchange uh, penny stock on the NASDAQ. Well, when I started looking at the two stocks side by side, they look like brothers. The charts are running the same way. They're in the same sector. They've got the same sort of news. So I figured, you know, this is a dark horse sector that nobody's been paying attention to because AI has been getting all the limelight here recently. So I think maybe we're on a turn here right now. I started looking at other quantum companies and they are all starting to push up right now. And these two companies have been running for about four or five days and look like they could continue to run. So let's dive into both of them. I'll try to keep this as simple as I can. So what was the relative volume around QMCO? Ooh, what a big jump. Going from just about 200,000 shares to 9.7 million shares. You're looking at five times, it's five, nine, 45. You're looking at 45 times her normal volume. Looking at QBTS's volume. Nice jump there, maybe about eight times her normal volume from 1.7 to 15 million. QBTS's share structure. Average, it's not bad. Outstanding share count is about 113 million. No clue what the float is, but it won't be any higher than that. And their market cap is 163 million. Looking at Quantum Core's share structure, about the same thing, we're roughly 100,000 million shares. We wish it was 100,000. 100 million shares outstanding. Don't know what the float is, but it won't be higher than that. And here we've got 46 million in the market cap. Financials for Quantum Core. I don't want to get you confused here. Look at the revenues. They are pushing towards that half billion dollar mark. The end of their fiscal year ends in March. So at the end of March 2023, they did $412 million 
We know that's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts here. And they brought home some strong profit, 133 million. Quarterlies, they're doing strong. They're roughing it about a hundred million a quarter. And they're bringing home about one third of that in profit. Taking a look at Qubit's financials. Not as much money, right? But it is growing. 5 million, 6 million, 7 million. And they're bringing home over 50% in profit. Quarterly reports. Um, they're hovering between 1.5 million and 2.5 million. Doing steady and reliable. Now, I'm not going to dive into all the balance sheets. I'm going to tell you that both companies have positive stockholder equity. Add up all of their assets. Add up all their liabilities. Subtract them. There's leftovers for us, the investors, millions of dollars. So both of them look good in that regard. Now let's take a look at the news. This is where it really got curious to me. We've got news here for QBTS and they've had a lot going on. They've been around here the longest and I just want to share with you that they are making deals and collaborating with others. This is back in December, international collaboration between Vinci Energies, Quantum Basil and D-Wave. Also in December, D-Wave stands ready to support the new U.S. law creating pilot program on near-term quantum computing applications. Uh, then here in January, D-Wave joins forces with Deloitte Canada to advance quantum adoption. There's another country moving towards it fast and furiously. D-Wave and Zapata AI announced strategic, technical, and commercial collaboration. This is scary to me, folks. AI is one sort of computing. Uh, quantum computing is another sort of computing. And both of them are going to be superior to men. Now, and mankind is what I mean. Now, to put this in simplest terms, there is a huge difference between our regular computers, AI computing, and quantum computing. Basically, it comes down to this. Our primitive computers are task-oriented. They do tasks for us. AI is for attaining and acquiring a mass of information and then collaborating and extrapolating that information, converting it into new creations, new types of things. Then you have quantum computing, which is as close to a thinking brain as you can get. It understands concepts and reaches into, uh, I hate to put it this way, but interdimensional thinking. So quantum computing is going to be used to run society. It's going to be used in all facets of our lives, and we just don't know how far it's going to go. But we see the fire building up right now. And then this last piece of information, D-Wave announces availability of 1,200 plus Qubit Advantage 2 prototype in the Leap Quantum Cloud Services, making it most performance system available to customers today. Now, we have talked about AI cloud computing. AI generates so much data that the regular clouds that we put our pictures and our movies and our documents into is not a big enough cloud for AI. They generate a lot more data than we do. So they invented AI clouds and the AI cloud business has to grow faster than AI does, which means that's going to be a good sector to be in. And as AI is popping up everywhere, you know cloud has got to burst. Well, now we have quantum cloud. One just for quantum. And you're looking at first mover advantage. Now, I'm not saying they're the very first because over here with Quantum Core, we've got the same sort of news going on. Started back here in December, moving through January, right up until yesterday when they are talking about this new cloud storage service based on quantum active scale. So here is another cloud. We've got to have cloud for quantum if we're going to evolve into quantum computing. And we need quantum computing because believe it or not, it's going to do a lot more than just tasks. It's going to figure problems out and give us solutions to them. It is going to do a lot, folks. So I see two companies here who basically have the same sort of news, are in the same sector, and when you see the chart, you're going to see why they caught my attention. They look like they're related. They are running parallel to each other for the last four or five days.
Let's see if we can double barrel shotgun this. I'm over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim, and I have got both charts opened up here. We have got QBTS D Wave over here, and here we have QMCO Quantum Core. Now, I have got both charts opened up to a six month, four hour view, and it is obvious both of them are running strong right now. You can see big, tall green bars here. And when you look at the most current activity, you can see all of our SMAs have already crossed the 200 and are all pushing up nice and evenly. Looking at our oscillators, everything is pushing up. Everything is on fire. It is strong right now. Our volume on QBTS has been building up over the last few days, whereas on QMCO, we virtually had no volume to talk about, but today she exploded. Now let's come down to the one hour on both of these charts. So you can see how similar they look here. Both of them bounced off their low bubbles, crossing the 200, slowly working up. And then just a few days ago, launched and took off. Both of them are looking real strong. This one particularly because of that bar right there. Folks, I call that a pillar. Now that bar was not there long. You can go down to the one minute chart and you will see it was there for only one minute. She was just going along, minding her own business, climbing steadily. And then all of a sudden we had this abrupt fall from 50 cents down to 25 cents. That is a 50% fall, but it's going to take a hundred percent to get it back up. It wasn't there long enough to take advantage of this as a buying opportunity but it can be a very good token sign that you're going to see a run happen right now. So in that one minute, you watch it fall, you scratch your head, then it bounces back up. And here, just a couple bars, she is already back up that hundred percent. She is now doing this slingshot effect. When you see something going along nice and steady, abruptly have a hard fall and then bounce back the entire amount in a very brief amount of time, Watch for it to continue. And that's exactly what happened here. She shot up and hit this high bubble here of darn near 90 cents. Came back down, bounced off of the nine and just floated over that nine. And here after market hours, she's come down and she's landed on top of it. This is looking sweet. All of our SMAs are still pointed up and they're still all above the 200. Over on this one hour chart, it's as sweet and easy as can be. She is primarily sitting on that nine day SMA. And when she has to bounce, she does it on the nine or the 20 day. And again, these are pillars, folks. They are coming down through the nine and through the 20, stabbing into the ground, down into the earth. This keeps this, this ride up from tipping over and falling down. It goes down there and holds everything. So when I see these deep dives through a strong SMA, to me, in my opinion, that's just a token sign. It has more growth coming. And after these piercings, she took off. Had another piercing, she took off. I look for those single bar piercings to go through the SMAs and down underneath. These both look good. You can see we're hitting high bubbles today. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute for each chart. Sweet as pie on top of the 200, primarily riding her 50 day SMA. When she comes down, she bangs on to the 200 and she jumps off of it. Right now she is floating above it. You could expect her to come back down, but she is bouncing uphill. No doubt about that. Our QMCO, she's gotten over that 200, had that big push down here to that 25 cents, bounced up super quick. I mean, I'm going to show you the one minute chart. She was only down there one minute. So here she goes. And then all of a sudden she drops. Now this was pre-market. So you could have bought it if you were fast enough. If you had a standing order, it may have caught this. But the point is, is that she was going to bounce back up most likely and come right back to where she fell from, which is a hundred percent in just a minute or two, right? And she is right back there. That's the slingshot happening. You see it. So we pr pretty much believe that not only is she going to climb, but she's going to go to another extreme. She went from this low bubble to the high bubble. We see this a lot. Minding your own business, huge fall, snap to a huge climb. 
Then of course it comes back down and everything gets normal. Now I see we've had a drop off here at the end of the day. She is coming down. What's this one looking like? This one is holding her own. So we had strong growth today. There was a pullback on this one. We are still up. But again, we are looking at a sector that is a dark horse. A lot of people aren't paying attention to the quantum sector because they probably don't understand it. I mean, how do you explain it? If I honestly told you what I know about it, you'd say I was BSing you, talking about different dimensions and how we can reach into them and pull out technology. Hey, look at D-Wave's uh, lectures on YouTube from about, oh man, it may have been about 10 years ago. One of the gentlemen that invented it goes on stage talking to lay people like us and he explains some things that are quite scary. So I am giving you a forewarning before you watch it. So I like both of these charts. Both of them have turned, taking a look at those long charts again. Both of them have turned, they were falling. Let's go back a year. What was it a year ago? Woo. So we had a high here of $3.20. That was back in July. Swooping down and coming back up. Looks like we have hit a strong resistance right there. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Yep, that is definitely a resistance there at 209. We got another one up here at 246. That's a good one. And over here, we just hit 87. Oh, we're halfway through this gap right here. We are halfway through the gap, folks, the halfway mark. I always tell you that we watch for it to reach the halfway point. If it can get over top of that, you normally get a boost of energy. Now, our price is at 68 cents. The halfway mark, which she was tapping, is up there about 85 cents. Next one is 90 cents, and then she should push up to about $1.05. But, of course, we are talking about breaking the 200 now on the daily chart. You can get over the 200 on the daily chart. You've got some strong strength and we can get some serious rips out of it like we are getting out of QBTS right now. So there is a lot more research to be done here, folks, not just because there's two companies, but because it is quantum. Have fun with it. Don't get in too deep. I hope it doesn't scare you as much as it scared me, but I'd be putting not just these two companies on my watch list, I'd be looking at other quantum companies as well. As I said, I think the whole sector is rising right now. Little boats and big boats all rise on the same waters. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.